what is up guys this is Shido back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this is 1st September 2022 build if you're noticing the build date the flashing guide is present in the description but talking about the flashing let me explain one thing that the latest builds are actually supported on both ext4 and the f2fs kind of method so even if you are on f2fs or even if you are on ext4 you can flash it either way so if you want f2fs then definitely follow the f2fs kind of how to flash guide from the description or else you can just flash the older kind of method which is there for the ext4 you can follow that guide too from the description so that's how you flash the latest build and yes of course i have showed you guys the decrypted method so if you are encrypted do not flash that dfe otherwise all the like flashing methods should be actually similar and talking about flashing again i clean flash the rom with the ext4 kind of storage because i did not see much difference with f2fs so that's why i thought why not switch to the older ext4 while it's supported again and if you're wondering about the changes yes there are multiple rom changes over here but device changes shows as none but if you're noticing we have some evolver kind of changes we get the quick setting like brightness slider option then we have the bring back double tap long press power button toggle torch and we have the other things like the clock background chip the live display anti flicker etc added so these were not there on the android 13 builds so i will show you each and every part of this video so do watch it till the end but right now let me show you the about section so this is how the about section looks like on top we get the evolution x logo looks beautiful we have the android version as android 13 and if you make this clock to like this one o'clock you will get this 13s like android 13s easter egg and if you keep tapping on it you will get multiple of these emojis over here these are the android 13s easter eggs looks cool i would say let me go back from here we have the evolution x version showing as 7.0 eve and for Rafael official build again the security patch is of august 5th 2022 even though this is the first september build so that's how it is and in the build date it actually shows 31st august so yeah we are not getting the september security patch yet but yes of course in future we will get that i think and we get the soviet star kernel as the stock kernel here the build maintainer is of course joe Huab, and we have the SNX series showing as enforcing now let me show you the system settings in here we are still getting the system updater and from here you can check for updates whenever you want to let me go back we have the gesture settings and right here we are going to get the quickly open camera the system navigation gestures are there and the settings of it we are now getting the pill length customization the full screen gestures the back gesture animation the swipe to invoke assistant and stuff all those are there but yes we still do not have the thickness customization for the pill bar too early for those i think and we have the two button and three button navigation and in the settings of it we have this hold for assistant options now one-handed mode is also there and that is working perfectly fine we have the double tap then the swipe direct screenshot is also working perfectly fine we have the share edit and delete option and when you need capture mode feature it will appear right here inside front camera settings we have this pop-up camera sound effects you can put it to disabled if you want then we have the camera led customization now before i talk about the home screen and stuff let me talk about one more thing that is the playback control so once the device is locked the volume up and down or the playback control is actually working with bluetooth devices but not with the wired headset that's how it is so this is how it looks just notice how beautiful it looks and if you're noticing the seek bar once you scroll and just like this we have this wavy kind of seek bar over here and it appears even on the lock screen we have this play and pause you can switch the bluetooth device from right here to your phone speaker or something if you want then we have this other settings like the play pause music right here and let me just unlock the screen so that i can show you the other things and this media art is actually showing up on the quick setting panel too so that looks beautiful and let me show you the volume panel once it's playing a music and this is how it looks and you can expand the volume panel right now that's really cool it was not there in android 13 builds of evolution x but right now as you are noticing you can expand the volume panel just like this and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here it comes in this landscape way and here you can increase or decrease the volume from right here that's great and also you can switch the output device from right here and all of these just notice how beautiful it looks all over the ui so yeah i'm definitely liking it actually shows which song it's playing and stuff so yeah that's great that we have all these things appearing perfectly fine and just notice it actually like changes the color of ui of this volume increasing and decreasing to the particular song that you are listening depends on that song's album art so we are still getting the pixel launcher that's how it is and to the left we are getting the ghost discover page the scrolling and stuff everything is perfectly fine swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel and if you're noticing that 
I have the light theme enabled, but even then the quick sync panel stays in this like dark kind of view. So that's how it is. You are getting this dark quick setting panel, even in the light theme. But even if you switch to the dark theme, actually the whole quick setting panel and notification shade will turn into the dark mode. And now let's talk about the widgets. Yes, if you're noticing this clock widget and stuff is working fine, no issues with that. But the battery widget is not really working. It is there, but let me actually show you. Yeah, just notice it keeps saying loading. I don't know why it happens, but yeah, I can resize it, but it doesn't actually work properly. Now let's talk about the cameras. Well, you are getting a old kind of Google camera over here. By default, I did not even open it. So yeah, this is the camera that you are getting pretty basic kind of UI. That's why I have installed a G cam. Let me actually show you this one. This is the latest MGC kind of G cam. And I have been really enjoying this G cam because it has all these lenses switching option like the ultra wide angle lens and stuff. All these should be working fine. Even the 2x telephoto lens is working fine with this. And let me show you the front camera is actually working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever with this G cam if you're noticing and the front camera is working perfectly. And even in the night sight mode, if you're noticing all the lenses are working perfectly fine. The portrait mode is there and even in video settings, we have this Bluetooth and the phone mic switching option. So that's great. And you can shoot videos up to 4K 60 FPS. So if you can live with Gcam, I think you can definitely really drive this from. But otherwise, if you want Anix camera and stuff, I would say stay away from this because I think in the Android 13 builds of Evolution X, the Anix camera is still not working. And one more thing I thought I should mention that this display on this particular ROM is still running at 60 Hertz, not 70 Hertz. So that's how it is. So for 72 Hz, I think we have to wait for even more future updates. But as of right now, you are only getting 60 Hz right out of the box. Now, let me talk about the quick setting panel quickly. And in here, we have this kind of looking quick setting panel where you get the power menu on the bottom right. And in here, if you tap, if you're noticing, we have the advanced reboot enabled and the flashlight over here is working perfectly fine with the power menu. And in the advanced settings, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. That's great. We have the normal power off and the restart option. Now in here, this is how the internet kind of toggle works and also mobile data and stuff will be showing up if you have a SIM card in here and volte calling and stuff should be working fine again. The Bluetooth toggle, the flashlight, the dark theme, night light and we have the airplane mode device control. So you can switch your like smart home Google devices from right here and we have the auto rotate then the battery saver. The screen recorder is also there. You can record the device audio and microphone audio together. We have this location kind of thing and we have the hotspot heads up. The sound toggle is also there. You can get the volume panel just like this from here. And the reboot toggle is also there. Let me show you. We have the calculator toggle. Then we have the extra dim. Data saver, do not disturb and the live display and the anti flicker or the disturbing mode is there. Also in terms of the live display, we are getting this outdoor bright sun mode. Now I do not yet see the FPS info toggle over here. That's how it is as of right now. Maybe I cannot find it, but I would say the FPS info toggle I cannot really see as of today. And here, if you're noticing the brightness slider is up top and we have this auto brightness toggle too right here. And the Bluetooth battery status is actually showing up on top if you're noticing. And even you can see the Bluetooth battery percentage on the quick toggles, of course. I've been using it with the Akiras one. That's why the icons looks like this. And we still have the Evolver. That's why we're getting all the customizations. And there are actually a lot more customizations. I'll show you. So here in the theme section, we have this background chip. This is new. If you enable this, just notice there is a accent colored chip over here behind the time. So that looks cool, I would say. And we have this dark theme kind of customization from right here. Then we have the headline body fonts. Plethora of fonts you are getting right here. And you will also get the nothing dot, nothing headline, etc. fonts. So nothing fonts are also there. And the OnePlus fonts, the Samsung and the other fonts are still there. And we have the icon packs. We have these many icon packs. Again, I have been using with the Acuras one and we also get this kind of signal icon styles and the Wi-Fi icon styles you can change as well. Then we have the icon shapes customization and let me go back from here in the status bar we get this logo so you can enable custom logos then the network traffic monitor you can enable and inside status bar items we have this headset bluetooth etc kind of icons then if you go back we have this show data disabled icon then the show 4g instead of lte roaming indicator etc options are there let me go back we have the notifications so from here you can customize the heads up and we have the in call vibration options Blink flashlight for incoming call option is there and inside quick settings we have this music tile, tidal track and we have the secured quick setting toggle styles 
and we have this quick quick setting panel or the quick pull down you can say so you can customize this from right or left or always i have enabled it always so just when i swipe from anywhere it will also show you the quick setting panel so the whole quick setting panel appears whenever i slide down this is how i customized it but you can change it the brightness slider position you can actually change you can have it on bottom and just right now if you are noticing the brightness slider position actually changed to bottom and here we have the auto brightness icon the quick setting warnings let me go back we have the power menu customization and in here we have the disable power menu unlock screen advanced reboot and stuff you can enable even i have enabled the flashlight from here in the gestures we have the brightness control so you can slide a finger on the status bar to actually control the brightness of the screen and the long press power and toggle torch is working fine i have checked that and we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both now in here we have the lock screen customization then we have the udf plus customization but this is just for the screen of FOD, there is no Fitbit scanner icon changing option as of right now. And we have this height status bar and the quick setting panel in the lock screen. Then we have the blur amount of the lock screen media, ripple effect, etc. Let me go back to the buttons. Here we have the show volume panel on the left side, volume steps, etc. Let me go back to the animations here. We can customize the screen of animation to CRT or scale or default. And in here we have the misc settings. From there you can schedule the always on display already if you want. Then we have the launch music up on headset connect. We are getting the unlimited Google photos backup and we have the unlock higher FPS in games. Then we have the jitter kind of thing and we have this show temperature warning. Then we get the USB configuration. Really convenient for me to set it to file transfer. So that's how I use it. And we have this radio info on the bottom. That's it. That's all the customization which are present. And of course you can run to the developers from right here. Now let me talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like and yes, we do not actually see the battery charging cycles as of right now. Actually getting to see the battery temperature already so that's great. And we have the battery percentage enabling option from right here. By the way, there is no battery icon changing option as of right now. You cannot really get those battery icon landscape art style and stuff. And we have the smart charging option already. Then we have the battery saver, battery manager, etc. And with that, just notice how much battery life I've got. I have been getting about 9 hours of screen on time which is huge but you have to note that I have a new or replaced newer battery over here that's why I am getting this much screen on time otherwise you might get about 5 to 6 hours of screen on time or even better than that if your battery's health is good and if you go into the health section my battery health is actually showing up here as 100% by the way again I have a brand new battery here that's why you are saying this 100% battery health I guess but overall I would say the battery life is really good if your battery health is good enough and again the fast charging is working flawlessly over here I have been using a 33 watt fast charger and with that the fast charging have not given me any problems whatsoever mostly while the battery is below 80% I have seen most of the time it is charging above like 4000 mA and stuff so it charges blazing fast no issues whatsoever but yes i have to admit the device gets actually a lot hot when it's fast charging with the 33 watt fast charger otherwise with 18 watt fast charger it's actually fine no huge issues at all in the sound and vibration settings if you scroll down we are getting the clear speaker option then we have the haptic feedback and you can customize the haptic feedback intensity yes if you and if you are going back it will give you a haptic feedback and we have the me sound enhancer and in here we are still getting all these headset presets and we have even some newer ones like the Mi Bluetooth headset, neckband and stuff. The sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well was amazing. I did not have any issues and we have all these choose preset option to the bass booster, bass reduction, etc. And we are also getting the smart scene option. Then we have the hi-fi audio option too. If you have a really great pair of headset, you can definitely use this. Now we have the silent media mute. What it actually does, whenever you have this feature turned on, your phone is in silent mode. It won't actually even play the media volume. So that's great. And we have this touch sound, charging vibration and the sounds, then the screenshot sound, screen locking sound, etc. And the dial pad tones, etc. Then we have the vibration and haptic feedback customizations, live caption, smart pause, the phone ringtone, etc. You can customize and all the like media volume and stuff you can customize from right here. Let me go back in the display settings. In here we have the brightness level. Then we get the adaptive or auto brightness. Yes, the extra name is customizable and you can also use the anti flicker mode if you want. And in the lock screen we have the privacy controls. Then if you scroll down more, we have this control from lock device and stuff. This is for the Google Home controls. And the always show time and info is the always on display. And in here we also have this pickup feature. I'll show you all these things later, but we have these features in here. Then we have the screen timeout. You can set it to up to 30 minutes. The pocket detection is there, block alert slider option is there. 
I don't know how it works, but yes, this is there. The display size and text, this is the Android 13's newer feature. You can definitely use it if you want. Then we have this wallpaper zoom effect. The night light is there, then the live display option is there. Here you will get the anti-flicker or the resuming mode and the RGB control is also present, including with the hue, saturation, intensity and contrast customization. Also again, we have this outdoor brightness sun mode in here. Let me scroll down. We have the double tap to wake, prevent accidental wake up. And we have this wake up on plug and screen of FOD is also there. Let me go back in the wallpapers and styles and in here you can actually change the wallpapers from right here and we have like 16 colors for the wallpaper individually and even for the basic colors we have again 16 options the themed icons and we have the app grid up to 5x5 five five. in terms of the security let me talk about it in the settings of it we have the quick unlock and there is a scramble layout and stuff but again we do not get the face unlock or the app lock yet so if you are looking for those Yes, we are only getting the fingerprint unlock of the screen. That's it. We do not get the face unlock or even the app lock is simply not present over here. Now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. But before that, let me actually show you the pickup option. If I just double tap and keep the device on the desk just like this. And if I pick it up on my hand without pressing the power button, just notice the like ambient display shows up and even double tap to wake and stuff working perfectly fine. No issues with this. Right now, let me just enable the always on display quickly. Okay, so this is one thing that I hate about this Android 13 that we cannot actually enable the always on display toggle from here. There is no always on display toggle if you're noticing. No AOD toggle over here. So that's why I have to go in the like settings and then display settings. Then from there only I can enable the always on display just by tapping over here. <laughs> that's how it is. And here, let me actually show you. This is how the always on display looks like, by the way. And if you double tap just like this, the screen wakes up in the lock screen. And from the lock screen again, this is working perfectly fine. Just notice the fingerprint scanner speed and all the animations like this are working perfectly fine. And from the lock screen again, just notice the animation from the always on display. Let me try one more time. Screen of FOD is actually working fine. No issues whatsoever with that. And in Android 13, just notice the middle animation of the icons appearing when I unlock. Looks dope. So no issues whatsoever with the Fingbit scanner. It is blazing fast and the animations just looks beautiful. And everywhere, I am just loving this animation. And yes, there is double tap to sleep right now on the status bar. No problems whatsoever with that. So the Fingbit scanner has been working perfectly fine. I do not have any complaints regarding that. Let's talk about a few normal things. So yeah, the safety net passes right out of the box. So you can use banking apps without any problems. Also the DRM info stays as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And if you're wondering about the overall performance of the UI, let me actually open Play Store and Twitter. Let's just go all the way to the top. And here, if I scroll down just like this, just notice how smooth the scrolling is all over the UI in Twitter and even in Play Store and stuff. Just notice how smooth the UI is. So no issues whatsoever with scrolling that I have had. And let me actually show you one thing when I'm scrolling just like this, if I swipe up in even in the recent span, it actually scrolls the contents of that particular app. And if I want to go into the split top mode and stuff, they are working perfectly fine. And I can scale the apps just like this, no issues. And even while it has scaled, I can scroll between the apps. And this is all the recent span looks like. And if you are in normal app, it will show you the screenshot and the select option. You can go all the way to the left to clear all the apps from memory. And whenever you want, you can open the recent apps altogether if you have the split top feature enabled. So this is great. And also, let me talk about the Android and Geekbench score of this particular ROM with a CPU stress test. So you can see the benchmarks. The benchmarks are really good. So overall, with the like flagship 855 CPU and the Android 13, the K20 Pro's Evolution X ROM is pretty much rocking right now. You can definitely really drive this ROM on your device without any big problems. If you don't actually need those playback control and stuff, and if you don't need any camera and stuff, you can definitely go for this. The overall UI experience is much, much smoother. And I can definitely say the experience overall is actually better with the animations and stuff everywhere in the UI is much, much better than Android 12 L. And yes, Android 13 feels already much more stable than Android 12 L. That's what I think. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.